working at it, maybe I can get it going by the time you're
you're probably going to judge people that don't have that faith. You're going to believe that your faith is the faith. And therefore, everybody else is the other. And although faith, I believe, is a gift, I would never, ever, ever attempt to um, change somebody who believes strongly because it gives them, it helps them. It gives them a sense of comfort. It gives them a sense of it. Of, of hope that there's going to be something, and they have that, and that's a wonderful thing to have as a human being. So I don't think it's right to attempt to dispel that or argue with them about their belief, because I think belief is important. That's the good part. The bad part is that sometimes it separates you from everybody else because you think you're right, and it leads to sanctimoniousness and self-righteousness and all kinds of, of feelings like that. Um, before I get into some of these other aspects of uh, spiritualism, I want to continue on a little bit with my, with my background. My mother kind of lost her faith after a while, and she, she went around kind of sampling all sorts of other religions, all sorts of New Age type religion. I remember when I was about 15 years old, we went up to this temple in Chicago, and the, the, the faith that she was uh, toying with at the time was called the I Am. Has there been, anybody ever heard of that faith? I Am that I Am. We went up there, we were eating tofu, you know, and Brussels sprouts, and my brother and I were like, where's the burgers? You know, like, oh, yeah. oh, God, get us out of here as quickly as possible. But that was a new age kind of a faith when I was 14 or 15 years old, you know, that's 50 years ago that was up there. My mother finally, you know, she quit that and, and finally ended her life without a lot of faith. She just lost her faith. And I thought that was kind of sad, but, you know, when she was at that nursing home and we knew she was gonna die within a day or so, and I asked her if she wanted to, you know, or priest to minister the last rites, um, he said, no, I don't want, I don't want. So that, that's kind of, you know, some of the things that have happened to me spiritually or religiously anyway through my upbringing and pretty much turned me, I went to a Catholic school for six years, for six years of grade school. And then uh, I took a bunch of friends of mine to, we were going up to, to the little town by the by St. Mary's Catholic Church, and I decided I want to show them the Catholic Church. Well, two of the two of my friends couldn't go in a Catholic church, or they'd go to hell or something. So they stood outside, and I took another guy in there, and we went and I lit one of those little votive candles and put a quarter in there and all that. Well, the priest comes in, hauls us into the rectory, and accuses us of being a gang who are robbing the votive candles. <laughs> So the next year, my mother got wind of that, of course. And next next year, I was going to a public school. <laughs> so that was, that was uh, I also had, uh, had the uh, Monsignor tell us a joke once that I thought was very, very ill thought for a religious person. He talked about a, a Protestant minister in a Catholic church. It's weird that I remember this. I heard this when I was like 11. Somehow important to me. I don't know exactly why. But anyway, um, the priest told us in a, cl in a classroom setting that there was a Protestant minister, a Catholic priest, standing in the rain outside of the theater waiting for a cab. The cab turns up. The Protestant minister turns to the Catholic priest and says, Why don't we share this cab? Because after all, we do speak, both uh, preach God's word. And the Catholic priest said, no, you take the cab because you preach it the way you want to and I preach it the way God wants to <laughs> and he wants us to. Oh, so wow. that, those are illustrations of how, how faith being a very good thing can also be, I think, a very destructive thing as far as what we as Unitarians want to do, which is to fix the world if we can. 
to try to make the world a little bit better than it is. Uh, we're more secular in our beliefs. Um, so, uh, I want to talk a little bit before I go on about a little bit more about the spiritual growth of the congregation. Which, please don't listen to me because there are, like I say, other people who are much more adept and able to talk about this stuff than I am. I've been driving around obsessive. I can't wait to get this out because I have been obsessing about this for weeks. I'll be going to Walmart. The next thing I know, Walmart's two blocks away. I forgot to make a turn because I'm thinking about what spiritualism means. <laughs> it's, I'll be very glad to unload this stuff on you. And I hope I'm not speaking too fast for you to, to understand. But I have a lot of information that I want to get out. Let's talk about the part of this principle that says acceptance of one another. Okay, I had a hard time understanding what that means. Does one, and, and I've asked several people what they thought about it, and they've had different attitudes and opinions about it than I have. One another, acceptance of one another. Does that mean everybody in the world does that mean just us, the congregation? What do you think? Anybody got any? What does that mean? Acceptance of one another. Everyone. I think it means everyone. Everyone? Everyone. Why well, wouldn't not just say acceptance of everyone? Yeah. yeah. Toleration. Not be so judgmental. Mm -hmm. Not be so judgmental. Yeah, that's what it's aiming at. I yeah, think, I think you're right. right. What I think, you know, I, and I had one of these in my acceptance of one another. I'm thinking it's about religion, acceptance of all religions. No. It's acceptance of each other, everything about us. Me up here trying to, to give this talk. Uh, you know, the, the, all our little quirks, all our differences, differences in beliefs that we have, you know, and we try to accept all of those beliefs, but also just as human beings. So I kind of think this has to do with our congregation, that we have to be kind and generous and understanding of this group that is attempting to uh, make the world a little better in a more secular kind of way. Does that make any sense, or is that wrong? If you, somebody disagrees with me, please. I love disagreement. <laughs> We have to accept one another in the congregation in order to learn how to accept one another in society and in the world. That's right. In spite of my um, kind of falling away from the Catholic Church, I have a lot of respect for the Catholic Church. I think the Catholic Church has done a lot through the ages. Mm -hmm. I was going to say if that song is made that I, I have said it, you know, a lot of us will say when we think about spiritualism, we'll think about, well, you know, when you go like out in your backyard and it's a beautiful day and the hawks and the, you know, the, the nature and hills and everything, and you look out over that vastness or maybe the Grand Canyon you're visiting, you get this spiritual sort of feeling of how little you are and how, how gigantic the universe is. That's kind of a form of spiritualism, in my opinion. When I heard, when I hear a song, like a historical song, a Gaelic, beautiful voice, Gaelic woman who could have, no angel could have sung any more beautiful than this woman, I think about the vast um, history of man. Instead of the Grand Canyon, I see what men have done, men and women. Mankind. I'm not talking about just men. I'm talking about mankind. I can see that kind of or sense that oneness that I have with the universe and with human beings as well and human history and everything that we've done. And the Catholic Church has a lot to do with that. And they've done a, they did a lot of good. So I don't mean to, I don't, I, I all, I, I accept all religions. I think we should accept all religions. I don't think we should not like one religion because maybe they've done mean things to 
like my couple of my situations, um, or at least I took them as being mean spirited. Um, that's just a one human being, and none of us are gods. We're just human beings. Um, also, in some of the some of the spiritual kind of quests that some of our our members are on. You know, that kind of seems to me to be still a form of religion. I think that human beings require some sort of spirituality that it makes them feel better about life. And if they have rejected Christianity or Judaism or one of, you know, the, what, what the, Muslims call it, people of the book, the peoples of the book are, you know, Christians and Jews and Islam, because they all are based on the Old Testament. They're all people of the book. So, but if you don't believe in that and you believe, you know, that you know, all kinds of things, you know, uh, collective consciousness, that we're all part of the world, that's kind of a spiritual thing. Um, maybe thinking they're, that the aliens somehow were here and trained us to be what we are because we could have done it on our own or something like that. That's a fine thing, it's okay to believe that, but that's a form of religion. It's a, it's a, or a replacement for religion, kind of. Because I think all people kind of need that, need that spirituality. And if they can't get it through organized religion, then they come up with some other way to get that feeling, in my opinion. Okay. Um, uh, and the pitfall is that if you do form your little group of religious believers, it's very easy then to set yourself against another That's what creates all of the problems, and not just because of religion, because of any kind of group dynamic. If you want to see a tribal situation, watch the um, watch a champion like that Auburn and um, who they play the Florida, Florida State. If that wasn't totally tribal, the people are dressed up in the audience, and you know they've got all this regalia on and. They're totally against, there's a little war going on there on the field, and it is a metaphor for war, so football is. Um, that's, our, that's our true nature. I studied quite a bit about these ancient tribes. I've talked a little bit one week about the Scythians, these war the four hunter gatherers, but they're also pastoral, and they were also brutal and predatory. And that's the nature of human beings, to be predatory. That's why our eyes are in front of our, you know, predators in the, in the mammal predators, their eyes are in front. Herd animals, game animals, are on the side. Mm -hmm. So they can see a lot of them looking for us. <laughs> We're looking for them. <laughs> the same thing goes with people. Um, I'm going to, I have, I'm going to hand this, I think, um, and hopefully there'll be some discussion, some disagreement, maybe we can have a, a discussion here uh, about some of the things that I've talked about. Um, but I'm going to read some, this is something from one of the UU websites or something like that, and it, it, it does a pretty good job, I think, of kind of describing us, and it says, let us celebrate being part of a reasonable and passionate faith that allows spiritual growth without the burden of accepting specific dogma. A faith that requires us to engage in uh, more, engage moral questions deeply. This work is difficult, and the discoveries will be different for each of us. But we must always remember that it is through our most human qual quality 
our ability to love, that we can touch the divine. And I say, let it be. Amen. And I could go on and on about this stuff. I have a couple of good stories if you want to hear them. But if not, are there any questions or anything that anybody wants to say? David? Not a question, but I'd like to go back to your mother that you mentioned. Yeah. And the viewpoint that I see is that she felt something was lacking and was looking for it. And she began to find it. And she got above all this darn dogma and ritual and that kind of thing. And she saw where she belonged and looked responsible for herself. Mm -hmm. She didn't need somebody else to do her, her talking and like, uh, making smoke and all that kind of stuff. And uh, she was, a, in my opinion, a much more powerful woman, if that's the way to put it. Yeah, my, my mother was still. She was a, she was, she was a, <clears throat> she was a dichotomy as a person. She was different things on each end of, of mm -hmm. you know, the good and the bad. She, she was, what you say is right, David, but also she was angry with God because oh, she didn't get what she thought she should have. And because of this deep-seated religious belief that she really couldn't get out, she thought God should have you know, done better by her. That's what's got me. I, see, I believe in nothing and everything. I think there is a God. I don't know anything about him. I was like, I'm like, I have like a Native American attitude toward it. The great spirits up there, you know. I don't have any peyote, so I don't have to. I can't try to get close <laughs> to him, but like the Native Americans did. But I don't understand him. So, or her, or it, or if there's anything there, that gives me a great sense of, of freedom. Because I am not bound by why did God, why did this happen to me? And you know, I pray to everything and then not what what is that all about? That's not fair. And so I'll with you. No. Um, it gives me, I think, a way to look at everybody and everything in um, You think that helped right up to the end. I think her with her, yeah. Um, she didn't reconcile. With her she, she, she lived with him. My mother was an extremely strong person. She was. She did all kinds of things, and I don't want to demean her. I love, I love her. I had everybody in that room crying this song, and they hardly even knew her. It's so hard to play. See if they even can cry here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe next time. Um, no, she. She was just. She just was burnt out. She was demoralized by her efforts to. You know, she had a, we found a check in her wallet. It said, it was like a bank check uh, to Yvonne Martin, $1 million, signed God. You know, that's not real spiritual. That's looking for a reward for what you've done on your life. I'll tell you, you know, I told some Catholics, well, I'll tell one Baptist story. <laughs> no, no, no. My, my first wife, Gloria Marie, she was, a, she was a Catholic. We raised our kids as Catholics. They're all like me now, exactly the same. They're not uh, at all religious. But to me, we, you know, okay, I, I thought it was a good idea to open them up to religion. And, you know, might as well go through the catechism and all that in the Catholic Church. And they did that, St. Bridget's. Um, um, so one day I go home from, from work, and my wife, Gloria, she's like, uh, you know, I hope you don't mind, uh, Dee, but I signed the kids up for a summer camp, and uh, they're going to go for two weeks. It's only this excessive amount of money. It's not really expensive or anything. And I'm like, hmm. I said, it's not uh, like one of these you know, religious camps or anything like that. Is it? And she's like, oh, no, no, no. And she gave me the brochure that says Cat and Lorca. And I always remember this, the, the, uh, the letters, L-O-R-C-A, that stood for something. But Camp Lorca. I said, so this isn't a religious camp? And she's like, no. I said, what's with the big cross? 
principle is, is yeah, I think we should accept everybody. I, I truly do. And I think we get mixed up with spirituality and religiosity. But I also believe the core of that is that we have to accept ourselves as who we are, warts and all, because until we do that, we're not really able to accept other people for who they are because our works get in the way. And to me, that's that's the core of spirituality and, and learning who the God is, the divine, source, whatever you choose to call mm -hmm. God, is learning to, because that's how God, to me, sees us. And until we can learn to see others as God sees them, then we're going to have these dichotomies and these problems and the Westboro Baptist churches and the, and the, the jihadists when the core of Muslims are not like that That's and true. the core of Christians are not like That's that. True. That's true. So there's, there's radicals in, in everything, but if we get back to self and seek enlightenment, to me, my opinion, is that's where things will change. Yeah, that's what I'm actually doing. Yeah. 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 Excellent <laughs> job. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead. I just wanted, I wanted to say some things that are maybe a little controversial so that we can talk about them and maybe it will help us to better understand a little bit. If you want to say something, JP? No, no. Go ahead, please. Uh, Bill. Bill. I, was I grew up as a cat on my mother's side. My father's side were Baptists. So every summer I got saved by the Baptists. Most of the time, I was a good cat. Uh, but I always told my mother that uh, I wanted to pick and choose, do a la carte religion. And her retort to me was, you can't just pick and choose what you want to believe in. But in fact, we can. And that's why I have <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. Because so. I can pick and choose the, the good parts of the religions and leave out the bad parts. And whether it's a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Jew. There are certain aspects of, of what they believe that I believe in, and I share that with them. When I spoke on uh, Marie Ann's uh, principle, I spoke of tolerance. That is the only way to be understanding of someone else, is to be tolerant. That's right. That's right. And, and sometimes, though, if you are so strongly believing that your, your values are the right values, then you are going to be judgmental about Absolutely. who don't yes, believe like you. And so that, that's kind of... Um, and and it goes back to the first principle, which is to treat everybody with inherent dignity and worth or self-worth. See, I think, I think that's the part of us about the worst that, that particular I think acceptance of one another, that's a very specific kind of language there. Or you just say it, you know? And I guess they put them in a room for like three weeks or something. They had to come up, couldn't come out of the room until they came up with the set of principles. <laughs> <laughs> the story. Is, that, is that right? <laughs> but anyway, so that's, you know, they thought a lot about that language. So it has to have some meaning. 